Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Today, I've written down two scenarios that we've probably looked at before. The first one is some sort of point mass rotating around a pivot. There's no gravity. It's just rotating around there. And um, we'd like to understand what the momentum is at any given time. The second one is our merry-go-round. It's spinning with some angular velocity. And we know that it wants to continue spinning and we'd like to know what its angular momentum is. I want to know what happens if we combine these two ideas. One is a point mass going around a pivot. The other is some sort of rigid body spinning around a pivot. If we combine these two, what do we get? Today, we're going to look at the equations that govern the motion of scenario one and scenario two to understand how rigid bodies rotate around a pivot. So first, let's look at the equations that govern the motion, say for scenario one. We know that the angular momentum about O, which is the origin, is equal to m r squared times omega. We're given some mass times some radius. We know that the angular momentum from our physics is m r squared omega. If we wanted to look at it a little bit more rigorously, we'd say the angular momentum about the center is equal to mass times r squared omega. I should point out that if we wanted to be more rigorous about how we talked about this, we'd say that the angular momentum about point O is simply the mass times position crossed with velocity a little closer to its actual definition, or we could rewrite that as mass times the position crossed with its velocity, which is also omega cross r. If we combine all of these terms, effectively they're going to be the same as what we have here when we're dealing with 2D rotation, so we're just going to keep this definition for now and proceed. And in orange, if we were to say that there's some sort of changing momentum, we'd say that the change in the momentum is equal to mass times r squared times alpha, or another way to say that is m r squared omega dot. These, this tells us the change in momentum, and that comes directly from this equation, which is for the moment, the equation for momentum for a rotating mass. Now let's take a look at scenario number two. In scenario number two, we have some sort of rotating mass. We're given its polar moment of inertia. And in that case, writing this properly, the momentum with respect to O is simply equal to polar moment of inertia, about the center of mass, times omega. We see that the change in the angular momentum is simply i omega dot or i alpha, if you prefer. We've looked at both of these equations in the past. The question is, what does it look like if we combine these, if we combine these two equations into some sort of new scenario? What would that mean? Well, we would know that the center of mass is rotating about a pivot. And we would know that there was a rigid body rotation. So a nice scenario that would involve both of these terms would be if we have a rigid body going through rotation while rotating about a pivot. So now let's take this merry-go-round, merry attach it by some bar, and let's give this merry-go-round some sort of angular acceleration, so it's rotating about this pivot. Now what do we see? Well, we see some of the angular momentum about O is due to state one. We have a center of mass rotating about a pivot, and we know that that amount is going to be m r squared omega. And in addition, while it's rotating, we have a rigid body that as it goes around, you can imagine this rigid body is also rotating, so it has some angular momentum. So we'll add that 
and we have the angular momentum of a rigid body rotating about a point. So this is due to scenario one, this is due to scenario two, and we see both of them in action here. If we wanted to write the change in the angular momentum, we'd combine them in the same way, mr squared omega dot plus i omega dot. Obviously, the change in linear momentum would require some sort of acceleration. We see that by combining our intuition and our equation for two relatively simple scenarios, we can develop both an intuition, a graphical representation, as well as equations that represent a more realistic scenario, mainly rigid bodies rotating about a pivot. Let's look at some of the Let's play around with this a little bit to get a little texture. Let's move down a little bit and give ourselves some space. Now first, let's take a look at the angular momentum of a rigid body rotating about a pivot. If we factor out the omega, we see that the angular momentum about point O is equal to omega times I plus mR squared. This may look familiar to many of you as the parallel axis theorem. And in fact, we can make intuitive sense of this. We're combining the rotation about the center of mass with some rotation about an external pivot, and we're left with the moment of inertia of the entire system about point O. This becomes really helpful when we identify the change in angular momentum. We simply see that it's omega dot I O. And we kind of have a feel for that. We can imagine that um, a spinning merry-go-round when you can push right around the center is going to be a little easier to push. It's going to have less um, really moment of inertia than if we're rotating it about some external pivot. So we see some interesting things going on with angular momentum. Let's scroll up and take a look at linear momentum. Now our equation for linear momentum, let's say for scenario one, linear momentum equals mass times velocity. And if we recall, our velocity is simply omega cross r, omega cross r. We can also identify a change in linear momentum, mass times acceleration, and the acceleration is omega cross omega cross r or if we wanted to rewrite that m times a quantity omega dot cross r minus omega squared r and both of these correspond to in scenario one the acceleration of the center of mass now let's take a look at scenario two in scenario two we see no change in linear momentum nor do we see any linear momentum. This merry-go-round is simply spinning, and even if it accelerates, there's no change in linear momentum. Hence, when we combine these two, this has no influence. In other words, the linear momentum equations for scenario one are also good for our third scenario. Why not just make it, here we go, scenario three. So we can bring these equations down to the bottom and we'll have a full list of equations valid for a rigid body rotating about a pivot. In summary, by reviewing two of the basic scenarios that we've seen that represent rotating bodies, first the center of mass rotating about a pivot and also a rigid body rotation, we can combine those two so now we have an understanding of rigid body rotation about a pivot.